Today's video is about fishing. And uh, I just can't believe how close the seals are getting to me. I can see right into the water with the Polaroid glasses, so I can see everything they're doing. This is Doggy Island here. So uh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to dock the kayak there and uh, go for a little walk around the island. I've caught one mackerel on my first cast, caught nothing else since then, which is generally what happens. You can kind of spook the fish. I'm going to get onto the island and uh, have a look around there and maybe have a bite to eat or something. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. I am out on the kayak and uh, I'm just on Docky Island. I went out for a fishing trip and uh, ended up recording uh, some great footage, I think, of a whole load of seals there. I uh, caught one mackerel and um, I'm up on the island now. You can see it here behind me. Uh, Collymore Harbour, where I launched from, is over, over there. And I came in here, the island, you can just dock on the island here in Docky Island. Uh, you can just come in here in your kayak, you beach up and then go on your way. You can actually get a boat trip out to the island out in Docky as well. Um, I don't know how much the boat trip is, but if you just search online there, I'm sure you can find out information fairly handy. Um, so yeah, so I'm fishing, caught one mackerel, like I said, and... Um, <laughs> My God, just to be around those seals like that and, and have them so close to the kayak like that has just made my day. So I'm going to have a look around the island, see what I can see. I believe there's a ton of rabbits here and of course there's tons of seals, but I might get to, to catch them from a different angle. We'll go and have a little wander. I'll uh, record that bit and put that in the video as well. So uh, stick around. Okay, so go for a bit of a wander on the island then. So there's supposed to be a serious amount of nesting birds on the island. So you can see here in the sand, a lot of the birds do nest in there. And that's where they seek shelter from all the rain and the, uh, the wind, mainly the wind. Oh wow, would you just look at it. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I think the tower is called Martello Tower. Martello Tower. So I know nothing about it. There's another island off the coast of. There's another island off the coast of Dublin as well called um, Lambay Island, and I think that has a tower there called Martello Tower as well. So I don't know why this one's called Martello and that one's called Martello. They both look identical, um, but I don't know what the whole thing with Martello Tower is. So this is this building here behind me. A yeah, really nice building. Gorgeous old granite walls. Don't build them like they used to. Alrighty, so roof is no longer on it. Really old fireplace down there. Yeah, with a chimney. So this is coming back out. Oh, there's a load of rabbits. <laughs> Don't know if you can see them on the camera there. They're probably really, really small. Uh, I'll try and zoom in there if I can. Okay, where has he gone? Okay. Some bunny rabbits. <laughs> there 
there's a bunny rabbit there. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can imagine breeding like rabbits. That old saying, breeding like rabbits. You can just imagine what an island is like. You can just imagine how many rabbits are on an island. And you can hear the birdies are not happy with me. Just if you're wondering how animals get onto an island, such as land animals like rabbits, uh, well, the last ice age was like 13 or 14,000 years ago in Ireland. And um, so what happened was when a lot of the ice caps melted, the seashore uh, got much higher. And so that's what cut most of um, most of the islands off from the mainland. So it would have been all mainland at one stage. And then when the ice caps melted, the, the sea level rose and that cut off a lot of animals from uh, other parts of the earth. And that's how a lot of animals became extinct, like the mammoth and um, oh, all sorts of... Uh, actually the Irish deer as well, the, the Irish elk. So that was a really large deer in Ireland and that's how it became extinct. It moved over to other parts of Europe when the when the ice caps melted, it got stranded over there. And again, um, didn't last very, very long after that. But uh, that's how there's rabbits out here on the island. When the seashore, when the, when the sea level rose, the rabbits got stranded out here. And so they've been here ever since. What a place. All right. I don't think I'm going to waste much more time here. I think I'm going to go fishing. Back on the water. Try and catch a few more mackerel. Or pollock. So guys, those of you that are interested in the fishing side of all of this, I'm just going to show you the lures that I'm using and why I'm using them. Um, so this lure here is just like a, a plastic lure. Uh, it's pretty good quality. Um, I can't remember where I bought it, but I'm going to be using this and I'm hoping to catch a pollock on this. Uh, it has a pretty heavy jig head on it, and then I've got a spare body as well, um, in case this one gets damaged. And then, so that's on one rod, and on that rod I've got a 20 pound monofilament line, and it's specifically for kayaking, because it's, it's not really long and awkward. The only thing is, you actually catch a fish and it runs on you and um, because it's a short rod you can't hold the line up above the front of the, the kayak and what hand, ends up happening is the line gets caught on the front of the kayak so it can be a bit of a hindrance sometimes as well this is a seven foot rod carbon fiber and that has 30 pound uh, braid on it <clears throat> 30 pound braid great little rod and this is the one that i'm using for catching the, the mackerel so stick around if you're interested in fishing still Got a little sand eel. Sorry, buddy. Oops. <laughs> so these are bait fish that the mackerel feed on, and lots of other fish as well. Pollock, cod. <laughs> I, I've never caught one before. A gorgeous little fish. So that's a sand eel. Beautiful little thing. <laughs> so the fish down there, the conditions couldn't be better, it's overcast and it's not too warm, it's not too cold, it's just perfect. So the main reason for fish feeding when it's dull and there's, it's not really shiny is that fish don't have eyelids like you or I and um, when the sunlight is shining on the top of the water 
that's magnified through the water and it's very bright on the fish so they obviously don't have eyelids so they can't close their eyes so when it's really really bright they don't feed very well so that's why when you've got dull and overcast weather uh, fish feed much better then something pretty decent that's fighting like crazy Ah, oh, two Coley Oh, they're Pollock Two Pollock <laughs> Oh, buddy Beauty. A little Pollock. <laughs> Lovely little guy. There you go, bud. Two Pollock at the same go. This guy went for the lure rather than the, the feather. Tiny little fish, tiny little pollock. <laughs> Great. So I just stopped off on the far side of the island here because nature called. Something on the line, I'm not sure what it is, probably a, a mackerel, it feels pretty small. Putting up a good fight though. Mackerel are a great little fighter. Come on buddy. Ah, oh, two mackerel is it? Yay, three mackerel. <laughs> Oh yeah. I'll get you into the kayak. Oh, look at them now. Mackerel are a really lovely fish to eat. They have all of their oil reserves in their in their flesh. Because they're a pelagic fish, they're moving around all of the time, not like a cod or a pollock, uh, staying down at the bottom. So rather than having oil in their liver, they have the oil all the way through their body. And that's why they're such an oily fish, because they're constantly moving. They need that oil in their flesh so that they can move around. Another little pollock. <laughs> What a beautiful colour. Wow, they're so gorgeous. Off you go. Oops. 
Same again. Okay, so guys, uh, my GoPro died, and um, my aim today was to catch Pollock, and I caught like about probably 16 or 20 very small Pollock. But then, <laughs> wait till you see this guy. He, oh my God, I caught him on the little perch rod, the seven foot, um, the seven foot perch rod that I have, and um, it's called a psycho perch. The fish just nearly took the rod out of my hands. I couldn't believe it. So uh, I'll give you a look at it now. So there it is between my legs, <laughs> an absolutely gigantic pollock, <laughs> and my god, the thing just fought like crazy. I think it's um, its head is absolutely ginormous. The fish, I think the fish is probably like, oh my god, like I would say it's about eight or nine pound. Oh Jesus, it might even be a little bit more. So that's it folks, another day done and dusted on the kayak. Um, my best day by far uh, yet out fishing. I caught probably about 30 pollock, a very small pollock, um, and a few other species that I didn't recognize, very similar to cod or pollock, um, probably pollock and maybe whiting. Absolutely gorgeous fish, but um, the pollock were just biting like crazy. I, I, I've only caught a few pollock before in the past, but I just caught tons of them. I got into kelp, and um, that's where they all seem to be lying and that's where I caught the large fish. I'm not going to get a chance to weigh it because I'm going to actually fillet it here uh, while I'm at the beach. If I was at home filleting fish, uh, I'd probably have a few unhappy ladies so I'm going to do it down here. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you like that video, you like fishing and um, uh, subscribe, hit like, uh, comment there as well if you can and um, I'll see you on the next adventure. Cody Peterson says that doesn't he? Right, see you on the next shenanigans. <laughs>